matching the Dutch and Otaku and Seko. Okay. So, yeah, the last session for today and the last session for Box Days. Uh, afterwards, we'll have a small closing and thank you note down, down there in Orange, in Orange Tessie. And afterwards, a party. And these guys will warm it up. Yeah, they are doing something amazing with the uh, uh, cars, so you should definitely see this. And yeah, we have Dragisha and Jelena from Bosch. And so I'm uh, going to give you now your stage. Yeah. I'll just play the timer. OK, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, the yeah. As the title says, uh, we, talk, we will talk something about connected car. What is connected car? We will see through the, uh, our small presentation. I will really like to thank you all of you because I never had experience nor uh, opportunity to have a, such a big uh, and uh, su such a big audience. So thank you very much. We will start right right now. Uh, what is the point of having? Uh, what is the idea, in fact, of that presentation? The idea is that we have uh, opportunity, since the smartphones are invented, that we, that we have, um, that people are, in fact, addicted to those small things, and uh, that they want to use it every time, in the car, in the, in the movie, at home, at work, and so on and so on. Uh, at work, everything is OK, but in car. In car, it can be life critical. You cannot text and uh, drive or chat and drive or do whatever and drive, except uh, if you use some of the things, uh, some of the, let's say, uh, ecosystems which are uh, made in such a manner to prevent uh, hazard uh, uh, situation uh, as much as possible. And those ecosystems are car kit from, uh, which comes from Apple, then we have uh, its counterpart from the Google Kitchen, which is called Android, uh, which is called Android Auto, and also we have a kind of uh, specific hardware software conf uh, configuration, which uh, must be heavy, which must be mounted into the car into the service, and this is called CarLink. And we also have a manufacturer custom solution. Manufacturer custom solutions is, let's say. Uh, I will be the closest, uh, the closest possible for, uh, to you from the IT or telco point of view. Uh, manufacturer specific solution is something like Nokia E40 series system. That means this is something embedded which cannot be expanded, uh, proprietary, and so on and so on. So, uh, what is common for all of those systems? The, com for, uh, the common for all of those systems is that they have top-down approach. What is top-down approach? Top-down approach means that uh, if I need to use smartphone within the car, I will not, not use the, let's say, to by pulling it from my pocket, then see it like that, to pushing and something, and something weird can happen in front of me. Uh, instead of that, I will put my phone within the co kind of compartment, use uh, the infotainment system that is integrated into my car and uh, use it in the, let's say, most convenient and more safe way that is, uh, let's say, deal together with uh, big consortium, A Apple, um, Google, American Automotive Association, ADAC European, and so on and so on. So, uh, and we call it top-down approach. What top-down approach? Top-down means this is from the UI to the to the pardon to the controlling of the uh, from the UI to the controlling of the device itself. And um, did anybody of you have opportunity to use the car with the Android out or with uh, you? And uh, did you notice uh, which car it is? It was. Okay, does it have something with, uh, behind, uh, behind that? If you, if you browse through the, through, the, through the interface of the Android Auto, you will see a kind of gear icon. And if you push on the gear icon, does it happen something or it's empty screen? Yeah, you have a UI, but something behind. In 99% of the situation, there's nothing behind. That means it's left for the kind of a future use. And uh, what's going to happen here? In fact, nobody knows. 
uh, neither knows the guys from Apple nor from Google nor something like that. They don't know, uh, in fact, what to put here. In fact, they know what to put here, but uh, it's uh, the car standards uh, in the automotive industry are so widespread and so different and so, let's say, a little bit weird from the IT point of view that it's uh, pretty heavy and um, pretty expensive to implement. So uh, we try to find a niche here to build something as much universal as we can according to the Bosch long time, let's say, no presence into automotive industry. And uh, we decide to build the future, something like is behind this Gary icon. And something what is behind this gear icon when you, let's say, want the data from the, from, the, from, the, from the car itself, that it should be shown. And we call it a bottom-up approach. And this is what the term connected car means. It means pro pro providing all necessary data that, that you could get from your car at your service in any time, and in real time. It's really, it really, and it really, really works. This is how it basically works. Uh, we have these uh, little devices, uh, we call it dongle. It's shown here, but later you will see a big up in the sky. This is this one up to the Toyota, which is, which is called dongle. It gets a kind of data from the OBD port of your computer, transmits it either via smartphone device or wirelessly through the GSM network around the globe, push it into the storage, and so on, and so on, and so on. And, uh, okay, except to possibility that you might uh, have at the first time that will take you the data from, from, uh, from your car and get a kind of a spin image of you, uh, what can we do the rest? We can uh, have it, uh, let's say, we can treat a car as a complex sensor. And according to that, we can, we can uh, put uh, a, a lot of data uh, which is taken by the car and converted in the right way to improve the road safety, to, to provide you with the appropriate insurance fee, to make just-in-time diagnostics of your car. That means you uh, should be, uh, let's say, uh, you should be taken to the service really in the way, in the time when you need to be attended into the car service. Uh, you will not be, let's say, warned by false alarm on your dashboard. And uh, also this is from the developer's point of view a great lesson for data main mining because different uh, uh, interpretations of the way how the data uh, from the car is implemented can give you mm, more or less data uh, which is really important for the car safety. Okay, before we continue, we need to know something about the car itself. And we need to know what is the CAN bus. The CAN bus is a nice, nasty little thing which exists in almost every car uh, in, in those days. It's invented by Robert Bosch in 1983 and patented and published in 1986. And the first car which uh, have the EQ uh, connected by CAN bus is made in 1988. And uh, in fact, this is something uh, what Mr. Parnas uh, mentioned yesterday. It's designed to, to hold gracefully. I mean, to, to be old and reliable and uh, very durable during the decades. This is almost, next year is going to be uh, uh, exactly the third year how long it, uh, how it exists on the, on the market. But uh, it really, really uh, works uh, without any problems. Okay, it's possible that it, this protocol can be hacked, but uh, if you want to know how and about that, you can ask me later. Uh, we have, uh, have two... Uh, very important, important features. One feature is OBD, which is, called, uh, which is onboard diagnostics. Onboard diagnostics will be this, uh, explained two minutes later. And the uh, Bosch key feature in this game is diagnostic trouble code. And this is from the usage point of view how it works. Um, 
from the user point of view how it works. We have this OBD connector, this is diagnostic connector which is exists in almost every car. We put the dongle into that connector, pair the device with, uh, uh, pair this dongle with uh, our uh, mobile device using the SDK that we built. And this, uh, the, this SDK has a simple API which provides uh, um, every data we need in the most convenient way toward the uh, possible end user. And end users are, in fact, developers. The builders of the application, which, is, uh, which can be, and uh, that can be integrated into a car kit or in Android Auto, or you, have, you can build your end user application, which, which in fact, builds the, uh, uh, which can be built in less than uh, seven days. That means it's really short period together with the testing and so on and so on. You can build a kind of distributed sensor system if you have a fleet of the cars. You can build, let's say, your own uh, insurance pattern if you have insurance uh, company or something like that, something like that. I mean, it's really uh, when you deal with the cars, it's uh, the area of uh, usage is uh, really, really pretty wide. And uh, now, <laughs> I will take a short break, uh, and my colleague Yelena will continue to... Well, we need to step on back. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Well, my name is... Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Start. <laughs> Just a second, please. Well, my name is Yelena, and I'm an uh, Android developer in uh, mobile mobi mobility department of uh, Bosch, and uh, I would have told you some short story about uh, SDK usage from the side of one developer, and uh, that uh, would be this part of story. So when you work on uh, SDK development, you have one big problem. You need to uh, present your your product to the user, and uh, well, you cannot uh, do that uh, by showing your automated uh, unit tests. So you need to make one uh, application which would uh, cover wide range of all possible usages of your SDK. So first, we made one uh, Java application, and since uh, this is uh, the year of a big uh, Kotlin. Uh, breakthrough, we thought that it would be a good idea to have one application in Kotlin also. So when uh, all, all of us who uh, read uh, articles about mobile development could uh, see a lot of articles about uh, cool stuff that Kotlin brought to us. So first when I hear about Kotlin, I thought, well, what is Kotlin? And then, of course, I asked my best friend Google, well, what is Kotlin? And it said something that starts with Kotlin is a statically typed programming language that runs on Java virtual machine. So, well, that seems really like Java. But when you remember all those texts that you read, you can remember that there are some benefits that Kotlin really brought into pr programming uh, world. So uh, I made the one uh, short list of s some of them. First, Kotlin looks pretty awesome. It has closures, optionals, it is uh, compact, but well, that is something uh, that just uh, look likes. It's not uh, what can uh, finish our job. But uh, well, next, next thing is that uh, all classes in uh, Kotlin are thread safe by design. So that is some uh, good start, a good thing to begin with. Uh, next thing is uh, that uh, Kotlin protects us from NPA exception, which uh, every programmer, it is a nightmare when you just uh, put one uh, text view and you find out uh, at the runtime that you have now point exception. Also, from this year, uh, Kotlin is uh, officially supported by Google for the Android uh, platform, so it is an uh, official language for Android programming. Also, for those who think that uh, less is more, we can uh, say that uh, Kotlin has a uh, lean syntax. Uh, all those uh, one-liner functions in uh, Kotlin are really one-line, and also uh, simple structures uh, 
Java bean structures uh, are, uh, can be also declared uh, in one uh, line, so it's pretty cool. And uh, at first, when you start uh, looking on uh, Kotlin uh, code, it uh, seems a little bit uh, confusing, but uh, when you get used to it, Kotlin code becomes more readable and more understandable that, uh, than uh, Java code. And here we have an example of our Kotlin application. So here is a structure of uh, application, and you can see that the structure is the same as uh, in Java. We have activities, adapters, dialogues. We have, well, different extensions at the end, but big deal. But uh, I have to mention something it's that uh, uh, when you want to integrate Kotlin into Android uh, Studio 2.3, you need uh, to install a Kotlin plugin and also add uh, this uh, snippet of codes to configure your Kotlin uh, environment. But uh, if you are those lucky guys who use uh, Android Studio 3.1, that I can say that uh, Kotlin is uh, definitely seamlessly integrated into that version. But uh, by default, all your Kotlin uh, files would be stored with uh, your Java files, and maybe you don't want that. So you need uh, then to add uh, this part where you would uh, separate those two things, and uh, you would, would declare a f folder where, where your Kotlin files would be stored. And uh, that's something uh, with uh, which you must uh, begin. But uh, first, if you want to have user interface, you need to make one activity. And uh, this is example of activity in Kotlin, and this is activity in uh, Java. I need to say first that uh, our Java application is not uh, identical as our Kotlin application because uh, Java application was used for testing and everyone who ever added some functionality added a button and then you click a button and see if uh, something uh, works. And uh, this application was uh, made for this uh, occasion. It is fancy one and it has a uh, dark style. <laughs> and, uh, it has dialogues and all those uh, things. So, but uh, one thing that I need to mention is that uh, Kotlin is 100% interoperable with Java. So you can, so you can uh, safely use all those uh, Java classes inside uh, your Kotlin class. And uh, here you have the uh, same uh, life cycle functions like uh, on destroy, on create, also in uh, Kotlin. Uh, uh, project, but uh, you see that here we have uh, inheritance uh, with the uh, uh, extends keyword, and here it is, uh, well, we have a different uh, notation, and uh, uh, another pattern is uh, used. So when you see like these things, well, we don't have all those uh, boil boilerplate uh, which uh, uh, Java brings, but it uh, seems pretty much the same. But uh, on the other side, if we look, uh, this is an example where we uh, make calls to our SDK and uh, where we register this activity, let's say this uh, user application, to particular signals. This is uh, vehicle speed and uh, engine speed. And uh, this is an example in uh, Java. We here have uh, too much code, uh, it, uh, it's not really readable. It is re readable for, for us who really do things in uh, Java because uh, we are used to it, but uh, it quite definitely looks, uh, looks much more cleaner. Also, uh, we cannot uh, make calls to our SDK in uh, UI thread, so we need uh, to make uh, worker thread, inv uh, to invoke uh, worker thread, and then call those uh, uh, to subscribe our activity or application to those signals. So I think that uh, this really looks pretty cleaner. And the uh, next thing uh, is maybe the last uh, s slide, but it's definitely my favorite, where we can see the something. We, here is declared a signal listener, something which should be one line in uh, 
Java took uh, twice time space than in uh, Kotlin, when, uh, where one-liner function is uh, really one line. So that's, that is uh, basically all things which we used in uh, our application. And uh, I need to tell that, uh, well, it was uh, weird at uh, the first glance when I heard all, all the, those things about Kotlin, and this, this was really some experience which we all survived, and it uh, worked at the end. So now we came to the most interesting part of uh, this uh, presentation, it's not the food, but yeah, now, <laughs> now Dragisha can uh, find his keys of the car and check fuel level and took you all for the one wonderful tri trip. Okay, uh, just a second, we need to start the show time, but before the start the show time, we need to switch computers, so I, I'll do that. In fact, uh, what we wanted to do together with production to bring real car here, to, but it's a little bit complicated, so we decided to take uh, one special car which we use every day, and this is uh, it's called Diamex. It should be can be buy, bought on AliExpress. It's cost around 300 euros, and uh, you can use it as a perfect emulator for uh, all, uh, for the. Uh, uh, all of those protocols that are, that are intended to be used inside the car. Uh, also, because this is, uh, let's say, as I have heard from the production, that uh, it's a girly oriented conference. We imagine it as a girly car, which is named Flo, and it's from uh, Disney movies, The Cars. And uh, we, uh, we turn it, uh, let's say, the, uh, those devices can be used uh, in, uh, in, the older, uh, in the older car, which have OBD port, but does not have their own uh, UI. So we will start it a little bit, and uh, we have only two signals here on this device which we can change. We can change RPM or we can change vehicle speed. Vehicle speed is the first one, RPM is the second one. Uh, RPM is number of rotation of, of engine per minute. Uh, this is uh, counter rev, and uh, it's more or less uh, known from uh, every modern car. It exists, VSS, of course, it's, it's the speed that also exists in, in uh, many other cars. As, as soon as I uh, dial the potentiometer, it changes on the, on the device itself. The, the connection is made via Bluetooth, and uh, it works uh, pretty nice and pretty stable. And now we will try to emulate a ki kind of, uh, let's say, um, sympathetic situation that we can find for the real life. Okay, this one. This is our neighbor who have the most quick and start each morning to, to heat up the engine. This is a kind of a Japanese sports car. This is a kind of Japanese sports car with a roto engine in itself. And this is one Italian supercar. Anybody from the audience wants to try to, to play with that? Vlado, would you like to join me, please? Thank you. How it works? It works. You, you use this dial and move it around. And look at the screen, what's going on. <laughs> OK, I'm kind spinning cool. up. Yeah, yeah, you're spinning up. No, yeah. Okay, back to 50. Yep. Oh, 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 I'm gonna burn this engine. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Uh, our so our line. It's a real time, real time. Yep, it's real time, real time. And it's always real time. With low energy consumption, of course. Great. Kind of great. Uh, also, we have. Uh, uh, thank you very much. The line below, we have the DTC. DTC, DTC is, is the diagnostic trouble code. It's, in fact, uh, the exact error which can be produced by, by your car. Uh, the people who are, let's say, mean a little bit will say, OK, this is connected to Italian car, but it's not the truth. Uh, this is uh, the schema for, for this error is took from one, one German car. Uh, I cannot 
tell you which one it is. If somebody is interested, I can tell you later. Uh, the point is, uh, we have a certain, uh, also a certain, uh, let's say, restrictions here. Be, uh, due to the security, we cannot use uh, the actuator mode for, for this device. In fact, it's, um, it's uh, uh, by design uh, planned to be to the fever. That means that we can, let's say, uh, cancel the errors or to clean them or to let's say, tune a little bit our engine and so on and so on. But for now, uh, for the sake of the security, because it's wireless access, uh, not wireless, it's Bluetooth, but it's, it's more or less the same, uh, it's uh, disabled. Uh, maybe one day in the future it, should, might, it might be enabled, but for now it's, uh, it's uh, totally uh, disabled and it can be, uh, those, error, uh, those informations that we can get from the car can be used only in the, let's say, in the mean of the, of the data main, mining. Uh, so much that, uh, that was uh, more or less everything that we can um, show you in this moment. Okay, I, I can find it, uh, you can find that uh, it might be a little bit boring and that it's not so interesting from the developer point of view at this moment what we have shown you. In fact, uh, the, S the, the SDK that we have built here since, uh, let's say, we built it from the less than six months from the beginning of the 2016 uh, till the July of 2016, it's the fact, uh, the, the point of its usage that's now in intended to be used only within the Bosch group itself. It's not for the, for the let's say, in this moment, uh, that can be taken into, into the commercialization for the future use uh, uh, outside of the group, but that, that's going to change as far, uh, as far as I heard at the end of the next year. So uh, you might be f uh, interested to prepare yourself to attack also the, this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, this kind of, uh, to get this kind of expertise and to offer, to build your products which are connected to the, to the car itself because, let's be honest, people love cars, and uh, at least me. And uh, that you're gonna, you might have a lot of inspiration to, to, to enjoy it. And uh, this is also the point that we have the big changes in the car industry. You know yourself which, that we have a lot of new manufacturers who, got, uh, who built uh, the awesome cars, uh, which are totally electric and totally, uh, let's say, unco unco unconventional like standard cars, cars are. But in fact, they still use OBD, and they will. That means this is a kind of the safe area on uh, which you can build maybe your future application, future project, even more integrated and complex system, and so on and so on. So, uh, for my personal inspiration, it was flow. Uh, this kind little car from the, from the Disney movies, and uh, all you can do, all you need to have to develop is this area, is first to love the cars, to uh, be able to accept all of this, this child, uh, little child sticks and to love to build software. That's all. Thank you very much. Questions? Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Woo! Yay! Okay, so, so questions, guys? Yeah, I don't have anything on a bot yet. Okay, cool. Hi guys, uh, Hi. thanks for the presentation. I'm Miloš and um, I have a question. Uh, let's presume that I have a car with uh, OBD connected your device and currently I'm not driving it. Instead of uh, that, uh, some other person is driving a car mm -hmm. and uh, he don't have a user interface in the car but he have all the sensors, uh, ECU or other stuff. And also, he don't know English, so uh, in the live driving, 
he gets some notifications on the dashboard, but he, not, he cannot read. Uh, do you support some uh, live notifications for the person who, who owns the car that, uh, I don't know, yeah. uh, engine level is not okay, fuel is not okay? Exactly. Or yeah. Exactly. If you ha if you, let's say you have, uh, but uh, in fact uh, you you need to have uh, this device. Per, uh, I mean this particular dongle device. That means the, what is put into the OBD connector. You need to have it paired with all your device that you that you want to to have the result on them. Once you do that, it's either iOS or Android doesn't matter. You will get the notification um, uh, on on all of them. So it's feasible. You get it as, uh, I mean, uh, in the real time, yeah. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, if you are not in the car, uh, the real time will a little bit delay because it, it go over, over mobile data because there's a type of dongles which got uh, mobile uh, with the SIM card in it and has a mobile transfer. This is so-called dongle B. This one does not work in this way, but the, the other work in this way. So this use case is covered. Take the mic, please. So uh, delay depends on mobile operator. Uh, yeah, it depends on the mobile operator if you are not in the car. But with, if you are in the car, it's uh, it's real time. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much. Enjoying the party. Yeah. So the party will start very soon. So yeah, thanks for being with us for these two days. And uh, yeah, like. Now you can enjoy some stuff, like the food is being served, beers are being poured, and a band will start rocking the stage. So 